So I recently went on a mini everyman library book buying binge. Not a huge one. I, I'm not a huge fan of book hauls or biting off more than I can chew. I, I read a lot of books simultaneously and some of these books are going to make it on next year's schedule for the book club. I won't say which ones just yet, but I'm really, really excited. You probably already know that I'm a huge fan of the Everyman books. I love the Pocket Poet series. I love what they look like at the moment. That's uh, an example with Franz Kafka's stories. If you take the dust jacket off, it comes in a nice blue, a nice royal blue. It's all colour coded. But I really like collecting the older generation of Everyman books. Now the first lot of books I managed to get my hands on is Samuel Richardson, 1748 masterpiece, Clarissa. Let me just show you what these books look like. Firstly, that's what the cover looks like, and the seller has very lovingly put a sort of lamination around it to protect the cover. Now, if you try to buy these Everyman editions, you'll see that the covers, unfortunately, are quite tattered. That usually means that they're well-loved, so who can argue? But someone has clearly had some foresight and is protecting them, and thank goodness, because the covers are absolutely Gorgeous. Look at the different pictures on each of the different volumes. That's volume three of this long work. We got volume four here with a beautiful, <laughs> some beautiful artwork. And we got volume one here, which uh, is the one that I'm currently deeply rereading at the moment. Let me show you what the back of the book looks like as well. I'm not a huge fan of advertising, but I have a lot of patience for in-house advertising of other books. So they're trying to promote their catalog. And I just love how they're, how they're doing it, showing off their authors. Um, there's a real innocence and freshness to it. Uh, there's a, a quote from the Sunday Times. What Gosset wrote in the Sunday Times in 1928 is even more true now than it was then. A cosmic convulsion might utterly destroy all the other printed works in the world. And still, if a complete set of every man's library floated upon the waters, enough would be preserved to carry on the unbroken tradition of literature. And I think that's true. What I really like is on the spine, they're numbered. So there's a real collectability. It kind of makes you want to just buy and devour all these classic books. Um, I'm going to show you what the inside looks like. The type is very, very small, but the font is obviously chosen very lovingly. The paper quality is very, very good. And I really like the inside uh, flap, which tells you so much about the work that it has to continue onto the back flap. Let me read something about this, because Clarissa, if you haven't already read it, is tremendous. It's very, very long. It's one of the longest novels, uh, perhaps the longest novel in the English language. It's up there with Proust in regards for length, but also psychological complexity. Uh, Richardson is eminently Shakespearean. He is really readable. <laughs> I know that sounds a bit odd, but he is really readable if you bring your whole self to him. Now, many people will come to Richardson and think that he's dull and he drags on and nothing really happens. You need to throw yourself into the story, and if you do, and if you treat it like the the uh, wonderful soap opera drama of the hu human condition that it is, you will be really rewarded. I, you can you can become quite addicted to Clarissa. The inside flap is an introduction by Professor John Butt, who says, "If you were to read Richardson for the story," said Doctor Johnson, "your impatience would be so much fretted that you would hang yourself. You must read him for the sentiment." and consider the story as giving occasion to the sentiment. Uh, the story, it's a, an epistolary novel, and we read these letters back and forth uh, by virtue of Clarissa Harlow writing to her friend about the trials and tribulations to do with her family and her forced upon love life and, and all that. I won't give too much away. Um, it's very, very long, but I don't think readers should fear it. I think if you get over the first few pages, get used to the somewhat antiquated style and really throw yourself into it. Some of the best prose easily in the English language. And I can tell you when that four volume set turned up at my door, it was like Christmas again. It was like opening some presents underneath the tree. I have the penguin uh, volume, the paperback with the entire novel. It's like a one and a half thousand pages, if not more. It's unwieldy, you can't hold it. That, you're more excited to read that. If there's more of a, a motivation because you want to get to the end of the volume and then you're treated and rewarded with another volume. It's, it's nice. Um, the other book that I got is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, uh, 1847. You'll notice there's different colours. Now, there's a reason for the different colours, and I just love the ceremony around all of this. Can you imagine being a first reader of these gorgeous volumes and looking forward to collecting and building out your library? Um, the volumes are published at six prices, so the colour corresponds to price. 
according to the length and nature of the work. Volumes at the lowest price are in red shaded wrappers. Anthony Trollops, his come in red, so these are the cheapest ones. The second price band are in blue wrappers. I have one of these as well. Confessions of an English Opium Eater. So that's the second most cost effective one in the Everyman's Edition, Everyman's Library. The third price in green shaded wrappers. So there we go, Wuthering Heights is mid-tier, so people with a bit more money can afford Wuthering Heights. The fourth price in yellow or brown shaded wrappers. I don't believe I have any of those. I really would like one. Uh, the fifth price in lilac shaded wrappers. I love I love the colour lilac, so I need to get my hands, get my grubby mitts on one of those. Uh, and then you've got the sixth price, which is in white wrappers. So the four volume set is a premium product. So if you want to get your hands on Clarissa, it would have cost you a pretty penny. As it so happens, it was actually really quite cost effective to get these second hand, so I'm happy. Anyway, look at the cover detail on this one, the Wuthering Heights. You can obviously see Heathcliff there. I absolutely love this. They've nailed the gothic, moody atmosphere of this wonderful book. Uh, it's a really, really good book. I, I absolutely devoured it in my first year of university. I remember it was autumn and I was on a train carriage across the country and it just suited it so well. It was dark outside, it was windy, it was blustery uh, and this novel kept me company and it's definitely ready and ripe for a reread. And not only that, in addition to the lovely introduction in this book, uh, we have a set of poems by Emily Bronte in the back. So it's a bit of a treasure. It's the gift that keeps on giving. The introduction says, Wuthering Heights is one of the great curiosities as it is one of the great masterpieces of literature. Critics never tire of trying to account for it. They do not succeed. Genius is not a phenomenon that can be explained. Yet, even accepted as a work of genius, even as a novel of inspiration, it is a profoundly puzzling, haunting and disturbing book. One of the few that permanently colour the imagination of the reader, changing his ideas, influencing his vision of life, penetrating to the innermost recesses of his being. To read it in youth when the imagination is fresh is perhaps to reach the peak of reading experience. I love that. Doesn't that thoroughly enthuse you to read this great book. Next up we have the 1821 Confessions of an English Opium Eater by De Quincey, Thomas De Quincey, and once again has a beautiful evocation, a beautiful artistic illustration on the front cover that just compels you to pick it up. Uh, once again you've got that beautiful back catalogue on the back, you've got the wonderful tiny small print uh, enthusing you to dive into the work. We're told to pick up more volumes from Everyman's Library because they have Lord Byron, William Cowper, Benjamin Franklin, John Keats, Charles Lamb, Horace Walpole. Um, wonderful, wonderful stuff. This as a book is pretty haunting. It's about the Quincy's Lordanum uh, addiction. If you liked Kubla Khan um, by Coleridge, then you would like this long prosaic kindred, literary kindred spirit is very much writing in the same sort of literary tradition. Confessions of an English Opium Eater in the blue wrapper, the mid-tier pricing. And we have the 1749 Tom Jones by Henry Fielding. This would have been a influence, an influence for Jane Austen, as would have been Clarissa by Richardson. Clarissa and Richardson's work has the psychological complexity. Tom Jones is very much a bit of a picaresque novel where the character doesn't really change. Not like Don Quixote by Cervantes. Um, the characters aren't really psychologically complex. They're, they're types or archetypes, they're stereotypes. Um, but there is a sort of riveting story and there's a plot and there's a lot of different things that happen. Uh, Austin would have taken both of these authors. She would have taken Tom Jones and the spirit of Fielding and the, the ability to craft a compelling plot and a story and she would have married that to the psychological complexity of Richardson. So reading Austin is like reading a blend of these two. If you want to understand where Austin came from and indeed where everyone who followed Austin's lineage came from then you'd do no worse really than to pick up these. This is in two volumes. I love that. How exciting. Exciting for every man's library too who would have profited from that. Many countries today, their publishing houses make use of multi-volume sets. Don Quixote, for example, in many countries will be published in two volumes. Spain, France, Japan. Uh, Wuthering Heights alone was published in two volumes in Japan, even though it's quite a short book. We need more of that in English. We used to have it, and now we have these big, fat, thick, 
novels, one volume that are unwieldy and hard to hold. I don't know why this happens. Is this like a cost thing? Is it because we're used to binging stories now? I don't know, but there is something very exciting about having multiple volumes and following a story in a series or a serial fashion. Uh, so that's Tom Jones and you can see beautiful artwork on the cover as usual. And we'll end with a couple more red wrappers. Thanks to Anthony Trollope. We've got the Barchester series here. We've got the Warden, 1855. This is the novel that I believe Anna Karenina was reading on the train to St. Petersburg. Mm, maybe, you, maybe one would contest that, I don't know. Now, I've not really got into Trollope. I find getting excited about his clerical dramas to be rather difficult. But then again, I once upon a time found Austin quite difficult to abide and I worked at it and now I read her endlessly. I'm a huge fan of hers. Um, so maybe the same will happen with Trollope. I just haven't given him his due. Trollope's a writer whose mechanics of writing have been passed down. He used to, in his days working for the postal office, in his days creating the red pillar boxes that you see dotted around England, he used to begin his mornings quite early and he would sit down and he would put his timepiece on the desk and he would try to write 250. 50 words per 15 minutes, so he had his eye on the clock. And I think he would write for like two hours or so, so he'd get a healthy quota each and every day. If he managed to finish his quota and he was in the middle of a writing stint, he would simply write the end, turn the page over and begin his next novel. He was vastly prolific and I know a lot of readers get a lot of joy from Trollope, so I'll definitely have to check him out. And so that's it for Show and Tell today. If you'd like me to do more of these Show and Tell videos, then please let me know. And also, if you have an Everyman edition of this ilk that you think I should pick up by virtue of having a beautiful cover or having a really good story or being a really good writer, then please let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and happy reading.